Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great day. Uh, before I get started, I want to remind you that we are still in the middle of a fundraiser. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, the fundraiser isn't uh, anywhere close to doing what we needed to do. We definitely need your support to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. And we are having a targeted fundraiser specifically for uh, Black Men Lead, which uh, started out as a rite of passage initiative and has expanded to uh, offer wraparound services to young black males up to the age of 30, including mental health uh, interventions and therapies uh, and services, uh, skill training, uh, and much more. Uh, we want to make this a national network, a national community outreach. Uh, we want to create a universal rite of passage that dictates and governs uh, the definition of black manhood and the proper socialization into black manhood. But we need your support. The information that shows how you can support the work we've been doing, if you followed me for any stretch of imagination, I mean any stretch of time, you know that this is something that we have been doing for quite some time. And we will continue to do so, but we are definitely in the need of your support. So we are asking you to give us your support. You can give by clicking the link or you can also give by giving directly through the organization's cash app account. Now let's move on. Let's talk about some of the reasons why the work we're doing uh, in the community is so important. Uh, maybe you've seen the headlines over the last couple of days. I know I have. I know people who know what I do have uh, sent me different links about these stories uh, <laughs> uh, in volume. Uh, so I've definitely had it sit there and I definitely understand why they are doing it. But first and foremost, uh, I'm going to say foremost, but first uh, up is Naomi uh, Osaka, which we know to be a biracial young uh, tennis player whose mother is Japanese and her father is black, Haitian. And she tends to despite uh, competing uh, in the Olympics and recognizing her Japanese heritage, be very, very vocal about things that goes on in the black community. She's been very outspoken. Uh, she's been called out for it and it has drawn the ire of a lot of people. And she has admitted over the last couple of years that it has had a, an impact on her mental health. She has withdrawn from tournaments uh, because of mental health, she has stood up and talked about the strain and the stress that it has on athletes after a loss to have to show up to a press conference, to be forced to show up to a press conference immediately after a devastating loss and so many other things. She got heckled at Mineral Wells at a tournament, uh, I think this past weekend. Uh, and that's, that's uh, important because that's the same Mineral Wells where Serena was heckled and called racial slurs years ago and boycotted it for years before she finally went back and was received uh, as the most accomplished female tennis player of all time. But again, uh, these things happen and we're talking about uh, Naomi is a young girl, I think maybe 23, 23, some, 22, 23, something like that. Um, and when you step out on these platforms, uh, you have to be prepared for what comes back. And very few people are built for the onslaught. But it goes deeper than that. On the other hand, there's Michael Beasley, a very talented uh, former NBA player that many people probably feel did not uh, reach his full potential, but definitely had some good times and some t moments he shined in the NBA and he talked about his mental health. He talked about the microaggressions. He talked about the stresses of dealing with family and the fa fact that everybody in his entire circle from his mom on to his financial advisor was stealing from him. But the fact that he says that he's been asking for help as far as his mental health is concerned for years and nobody has taken him seriously. And his question was, do I have to end up like Devontae West uh, before somebody takes me serious and actually extends help. And I've been saying this for a long time and people don't really get it. You know, it sounds like BS, but there's no 
universal safe space for black men. Black men aren't allowed to say that we feel vulnerable. Black men aren't allowed to say that we're struggling. Black men aren't allowed to say that we need help. Matter of fact, we're taught that real men don't need help. Real men do it on their own. All the stupid stuff that no other racial group is doing. Other racial groups have men who help other men. We don't. Not on a universal scale. We're competing with each other too much to help. We're trying to prove we're better than so that we can get the attention of the women because we've been commodified. I'm not here to make excuses. I'm here to talk about realities because if we're ever going to fix what's going on in our community, it's going to start with men. We can talk all day long about upward mobility and financial fluidity all we want to and how well black women are doing. If we don't get black men straight, it does not matter. And that's why it has been gateways open to the fluidity and financial prosperity of black women because without black men, it's still impossible. That needs to be a balance in what we do. That needs to be a role on understanding and a role awareness of what we do in the black community. What is the natural, instinctive and gifted role of women and men and how do they function? Uh, the roles have been blurred. The roles have been uh, redefined uh, for the sake of a number of different issues. Individualism runs rampant. But when we talk about mental health, the stigma shines darkest when men are talking about it, but uh, while black women are more most likely to be diagnosed with depression and they are likely willing to admit that they're suffering from it, they're not as likely to be treated by treated for it in a way that actually helps them in the long run. Uh, on the flip side, black men are least likely to report they're struggling with depression. Uh, now, the, the, here's the thing is, saying I'm good does not erase the fact that you're struggling with something. Saying I'm okay does not change it. That need to be okay, that demand on the black male to be okay, has created a toxic environment within the black community. Because when you internalize something, when you're holding in something, when you're literally not having a way of expressing, not having a way of releasing something, it eventually finds its way to the surface. And when it finds its way to the surface and it's not under your control, when it gets there, things happen. You harm yourself, you harm others. You say things that you don't mean. You you, you have a, 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 a counterproductive antisocial response to this reality. And it doesn't serve the community. It doesn't serve you as an individual. We've got to change this. One of the things that we focus on in Black Man Lead is access to mental health resources, but also promoting the positive development of mental health practices that lead to a more healthy environment. You can't be healthy if your, your mental health isn't right. Mental health is the beginning of holistic health. If you're not strong mentally, and there's this idea that when people start to talk about what Naomi Osaka and Michael Beasley are talking about, that they're struggling and that they're having you know, a hard time processing and, 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 and it's rough and people are calling them hyper emotional and a bunch of other things, but I understand what's going on. One of the things is because we have this demand on us to be uh, okay and to be strong, and that's black men and black women, Black women have this reputation, the strong black woman, the black man has this drive on him that he, he can't afford to present any type of weakness because of how he's going to be perceived in his own community, because how he's going to be perceived and handled by those outside of his community. So he's studied trying to present this presentation of being strong. The problem is this callousness that you tend to develop or this, this, this pseudo callousness that you tend to develop, it doesn't serve well in the social environment. We are social creatures by nature. We were designed to work together in harmony and unity to accomplish things. When you're sitting up and you are not functioning in the way that you're designed to function, everybody suffers. The idea that you can sit up and be antisocial and individualized and you know, extremely abrasive and hard and uncaring and lacking empathy and so many other things and literally take pride in it. Take pride in how hard you are. Take pride in how you talk harsh and, 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 and down to people. Take pride in how mean you can be. Take pride in, you know, none of this stuff hurts me. Well, if you can't feel, you can't properly parent. 
If you can't feel, you can't be a true supportive and functional mate. And so you get into these relationships and you wonder why they don't work. It's because we haven't developed the capacity to be able to be strong and to feel and to be vulnerable and to need help and to be able to ask for help and to be able to get help, to be able to give help, to be able to function in an environment where everybody can uh, trust and depend on everyone. Nobody trusts anybody. Nobody feels like they can go to anybody. Everybody feels like if they say something, they're going to be judged or their business is going to be in the street. And so everybody's sitting on a time bomb. Everybody's sitting up and, and letting things tick because letting the time bond tick and things get wound tighter and tighter until they explode and then everybody said oh my god I can't believe it happened oh my god I never saw it coming or that that was selfish you know everybody goes into judgmental mode but the person that had been sending signals had been asking for help had been doing or they had been hiding it because they didn't believe help was available and that they would be judged harshly and viewed in a way that they didn't want to be viewed in so they sit there and they pretended and they pretended and they pretended until they couldn't pretend anymore because it's only so long you can pretend before the truth comes out we have work to do that's why it's important to support the, support the work that we do at the Odyssey Project. Not only with Black Men Lead, but with the work my wife and I do with Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, working with young girls who are coming out of traumatic situations, whether it be uh, in-home sexual abuse, in-home neglect, uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking. I mean, we've dealt with it all. We still deal with it. We have contracts in schools. We also uh, have gone inside of correctional facilities for young minors uh, in TYC and dealing with these young girls and providing them with resources and dealing with them when they come out to provide after support to make sure they stay in or the right lane because they don't have support systems at home. Most of these kids are going home to the very place that they got abused in. <clears throat> and what you don't realize, <clears throat> what most people don't realize is the foster care system is the number one feeding source to, to human trafficking. Yes. And so the places that they're being pulled out of homes and put in for safety is the most unsafest place they can be and nobody's caring. And we're doing that work. We're doing the work with black men. If you, like I said, I have put years and years of research, study, and pro program development into the entire African-American adolescent, young adult, uh, adolescent and young adult male violence uh, dilemma. Uh, I've taught, I've taught, I've showed, I've lectured, I've written into exactly what these, what, 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 what's, what's behind the violence. Uh, how to mitigate and control and reduce the violence, how to pro-socialize these young black males into black manhood in a way that defines them and puts them in a situation where they become positive contributors to the community instead of the destroyers of the community. We have what it takes to change things, but it's not going to happen by sitting down and, as I, as you say constantly, sitting down and complaining about it, pointing fingers and going, oh, my God, and talking about how horrible they are. What we're going to do is we're going to sit them and say, well, they weren't born horrible. So what happened? And we're not going to give them excuses because of what they were born into, but we're going to have to change what they're born into if we want to change the outcome. You can't keep kicking a dog and get mad when the dog bites. It's that simple. You're going to have to create an environment where the dog is loved, where the dog is cared for, and so forth, in, in order to get a dog that's loyal and, and trustworthy. It's just that simple. You create the environment of anything that you want to develop. You create the environment of the, 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 the uh, vegetables you want to grow in a garden or the flowers you want to grow in your flower bed. You have to create the environment. You have to create a nurturing environment or you will not get the product that you're looking for. Same thing with us. If you don't put us in an environment that nurtures us, chances are we're going to reflect the environment we grew up in and we're going to do it in a way that's good there's an old african saying that says when the child cannot feel the love of the village he'll burn it down the village won't there is a certain level of warmth we're not giving that's a certain level of love we're not giving that's a certain level of guidance we're not giving on the flip side we are completely enabling them by giving them everything and not demanding that they earn anything. But whatever we're doing, we're not there's a bunch of things that are going on we need to do.
We need to properly racially socialize young black males if we want to reduce violence, if we want to create a safer environment for our community. More importantly, every time I think of a young black male that isn't properly socialized, I think about my daughters because my daughters are going to be exposed to young black males. Uh, you know, I've got a 19 year old that's got a little bar for right now. And, you know, and I, I've been in his face and I've checked him. I've felt him out and I let him know. You know, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. But I hope your father raised you to keep your hands to yourself because if he hadn't, he's probably going to be wishing he had. And, and, and it's that clear. You know, uh, you know, you, you, every time you pick her up, she's going to be in good condition because as her father, I'm going to make sure she's in the best condition. She's going to be smiling and happy, protected and feeling safe. If ever any time you can't keep it that way, you bring her home, drop off and you never pick her up again because if you hurt my daughter, I will hurt you. Now, I, 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 have, I would have to have this conversation a lot less if we were properly preparing our youth from the jump. You know, it, it would be less fear tactics and more supportive tactics if we could trust that these young men were being properly socialized. This is the reality. This is what we deal with. This is how it's going to have to happen. Look, I've made it to the gym. It's time for me to get out, get my behind the hand, get this workout over with uh, and get home to my wife and my family that I'm talking about. But at the end of the day, we have a responsibility to do something. When these young athletes, and, and what you have to understand, they're getting a platform because they're famous. There are people out there that live everyday lives that are feeling the same way that Michael Beasley is feeling. That's feeling the same way that Naomi, Naomi Osaka is feeling. And some of them are taking their lives. And and we only hear about the ones who have a platform. The one who, ones who are famous are the ones who are related to someone who is famous. We don't hear about all the others that are taking place. We have a problem with young children between, young black children between the age of five and 11. We are literally uh, leading in that category as far as successful suicides. Uh, there has been a massive peak in suicide of young black males between, just between 2013 and 2019, there was a 47% increase in black male suicides. We have to understand that there is a problem and that sitting around and going, oh my God, is not going to fix it. We're going to be have to be responsible for addressing it. No one's going to do it for us. It's our responsibility. It's our community. It's our race. So I'm challenging everybody to become involved, everybody to become aware. Learn more about mental health. Learn more about how much of a role it plays into your physical health. Uh, psychosomatics, uh, epigenetics, uh, adverse childhood experiences so many different things learn learn how all these things play a role in how healthy you are as an adult even when you are living even your negative childhood experiences have a projected impact on your physical health outside of your childhood into your adulthood and throughout life and you need to understand some of these things i've taught about it i've written about it i've lectured on it it's something that we have to understand it's something that we're going to have to address if we want to actually have an impact and have what we say we want to have. It's one thing to talk about black empowerment. It's one thing to talk about black liberation. It's one thing to talk about black elevation. It's another thing to take the necessary steps to make it happen. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Everybody have an unbelievable day. I'm out.